各位先生，各位女士，大家好，我叫欧立德，我是哈佛黑正清中国研究中心的主任。今天感到非常的高兴，也非常的荣幸，能欢迎到学校来，中国的诺贝尔文学奖作家莫言先生，还有我们在 Charles 河对面的。波士顿大大学的哈金先生今天来进行演讲和谈话，我们表示热烈的欢迎。I'm going to speak in English for the rest of this short introduction,、uh, and.、Uh, And then、uh, the rest of the、uh, proceedings today will be primarily in、uh, in Chinese. So the Fairbanks Center、uh, has been around for about 60 years, and in those 60 years, we have had the honor of、uh, having many distinguished guests on campus.、Uh, and、uh, I don't think, however, we have had、uh, very many guests who have drawn as large a crowd as today's crowd. So I want to thank each of you also for coming out on such a Uh, uh, a rainy, cold day uh, to uh, to hear our our two speakers. The way that we are going to do things today is as follows:、uh, We have asked、uh, Moyen first to speak for approximately 30 minutes,、uh, including translation,、uh, and then、uh, we have invited Hajin、uh, to、uh, engage in conversation and dialogue uh, with uh, with Moyen. Uh, and we anticipate that this part of the program will last for approximately 40 minutes. Following that,、uh, we will open the floor for uh, questions. Uh, at that time,、uh, if you have a question you would like to ask,、uh, we would ask you、uh, to come for uh, the uh, to to one of the mics that we will have set up,、uh, and uh, to. Uh, Identify yourself. You may ask your question in English. You may ask your question in Chinese. You may ask one question, and we ask that it be a question <laughs> and not a commentary.、Uh, and、uh, again, please try to keep that short,、uh, so as to give、uh, the opportunity to as many of your fellow audience members as、uh, as possible. Uh, at that point,、uh, that will last for about 20 minutes or so.、Uh, we will uh, then uh, end the formal、uh, program. As you see, books are available at, up at the front for、uh, purchase. If you have already purchased your book,、uh, you may、uh, line up. And、uh, our two authors have very graciously agreed to、uh, a book signing,、uh, and、uh, so we will get in line for that, and you can have your book signed. We kindly ask that you refrain. From any photography during the book signing part, no selfies, please. <laughs> so,、uh, as I say, the, uh, uh, our speakers will be speaking in Chinese.、Uh, many of you speak Chinese, I think.、Uh, for those of you who do not, uh, uh, we have、uh, translation provided.、Uh, our uh, translator for uh, Moyen's uh, speech is、uh, my colleague in the Department of East Asian Languages and Civilizations. Professor Jie Li,、uh, and uh, for the conversation,、uh, Professor Li will be assisted by one of our very good PhD students in、uh, the department,、uh, Taryn Chun. I will be introducing David Wong in a moment.、Uh, Professor Wong will introduce the speakers. Before I do, I would like to、uh, say a thank you to、uh, the Harvard Coop for being here today. Uh, to uh, the uh, First Parish Church for、uh, their cooperation in making this、uh, beautiful venue available to us. I also want to say a thank you to the executive director of the Fairbanks Center, Elizabeth Liao, and to、uh, the staff members at the Fairbanks Center who have worked so tirelessly and、uh, with such dedication over the last couple of weeks、uh, to make this happen. In particular, a shout out to Adrian Fitzgerald, who has really knocked herself out、uh, to pull this all together. To introduce our speakers is my colleague,、uh, Professor David Wong, Wang Duwei.、Uh, his name will be known to many of you. Professor Wong is the Edward C. Henderson Professor 
of Chinese literature in uh, the Department of East Asian Languages and Civilizations. Uh, he uh, is uh, certainly one of the world's great experts on uh, modern Chinese literature, modern Chinese culture, the author of uh, many, many, uh, many, many books, uh, and a very uh, active figure on campus, and also, I may say, one of our most popular teachers. So uh, with that, I will turn the microphone over to Professor Wong, and he will uh, provide an introduction to today's two speakers. Again, thank you very much for coming. Thank you, thank you very much, Mark. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, on behalf of CCK Foundation for Sinological Studies, I would like to extend my um, heart um, welcome to uh, Mr. Mo Yan and uh, Mr. Bajin, uh, ha Jin for visiting uh, Harvard University. Um, this is a, indeed a great, great opportunity for us to get together to hear two of the greatest writers of 20th and 21st century Chinese literature and Anglophone literature. I probably shouldn't say too much about the achievements of these two writers because I think you are here because you know who they are, what they are, you want to hear more about what they want to talk to uh, us about their literature and their um, the vision of literature. I just want to use this opportunity to say again that is that this is a great moment for us to celebrate not only two great writers but also the power of literature. Through writing, these two writers have been able to bear witness to the ups and downs of um, modern and contemporary Chinese literature. Through literature, they inscribe the happiness and the sadness, pain and the sorrow of Chinese um, people through this uh, very tumultuous century up to the new century. So today, uh, truly, this is uh, a, a rare occasion to hear their dialogue, and um, after Mr. Mo Yan's um, a uh, 30 minute um, speech, we will just turn to a dialogue between Mr. Mo Yan and Mr. Ha Jin. Um, now I would like to switch, uh, switch to Chinese by saying uh, a few words about um, the, um, the event. Gentlemen,非常感谢大家今天光临现场。那么有两位重要的华裔以及中国的作家。哈金先生以及莫言先生呢，来为我们做对话，以及专题演讲。我想这两位呢的重要性不需要我再多说，也不需要再多做介绍。但是在这里呢，我特别要强调，那么由于他们的杰出成就呢，我们再一次见证了语
So that's when I decided that I really want to become a writer someday. Uh, but at the time in the countryside, if you wanted to be a writer, people would think you're crazy. During the day, you have to participate in arduous physical labor, and at night, there's no electricity or light for you to write in. Uh, so uh, village children at the time really had the dream of becoming soldiers to join the army because there you can really uh, have Sundays and uh, have the time to write. Uh, 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 so like most village kids at the time, every year I would go uh, try to register for the army, hoping to achieve my dream. And China was going through a great historical turning point at the time. Our Chairman Mao had died, and many old writers were able to resume writing, and many young writers emerged, and also Western uh, literature poured in. My earliest writing still followed the revolutionary model uh, to featuring protagonists who are only good. 后来呢，这个很多国外的作家的书被翻译成中文出版了，呃，包括美国的海明威啊、福克纳呀、拉丁美洲的马尔克斯等等作家。那么这个时候读了他们的书，我们才感觉到，哎呀，小说原来是可以这样写的，大吃了一惊。But then foreign writers, Western writers were translated into Chinese, such as Hemingway, Faulkner, and Garcia Marquez, and we realized that you can write novels, you can write fiction this way. 那么这个时候我们也意识到，啊，我们的生活当中也有他们描写的很多的这种荒诞的、荒唐的事情。所以大家都不自觉地模仿他们的写作。and then we realize that in our lives there are many absurd and fantastic ish, um, uh, stories like in their fiction. And so uh, many writers started to imitate these Western writers. But大家很快地意识到这样跟在别人的屁股后面跑,模仿别人的风格是没有出息的。一个作家要想在文台上站住脚,必须写出自己的风格来。and then we realized that you can't just imitate other writers, you can't follow um, behind other writers and, um, um, and be influenced by them, but rather develop your own style. Uh, uh, to find one's own voice and style, it is essential to write about life that one is familiar with. Uh, uh, to become the writer that I am uh, is inseparable from the experiences, my personal experiences. I was expelled from elementary school when I was uh, in fifth grade. So I established a very close relationship to nature. Uh, I began to herd oxen and also uh, sheep and uh, developed a very deep affection for animals. 
有很多的关于动物的描写。That's why I write so much about animals in my fiction, in my novels. I write about, an, about animals as if they were humans, as if they were my friends. Also because I, uh, I wasn't in school, I entered uh, adult society very early. I listened to many legends and folk tales. And I also look for classical Chinese fiction um, in the village. And and of course, I couldn't read a lot of the characters, so I uh, looked in the dictionary. Uh, these experiences had a great impact on my later development as a writer. And later, Western literature really expanded my perspective on literature. So from 1984, so, uh, in 1984, I finished a short story called Autumn Water, and uh, the Gaomi Township uh, appeared for the first time in the literary horizon. Uh, That's when I found my literary source. Before, I didn't know what to write about. Now, I feel like I have a, an endless source for uh, my stories. 当然，我想一个作家的这种故乡啊，这个文学的故乡跟这个真正的故乡还是区别很大。There's a great difference between literary hometown and one's real hometown. 呃，这个文学的故乡实际上它是一个开放的一个概念。Um, a literary hometown is very open. It's an open concept. 呃，也是一个不断的成长的、不断的丰富的一个一个地理概念。It it is always growing and also being enriched. Because a writer's personal experience is extremely limited, so this uh, literary hometown um, is always uh, growing over time. Because so I transplanted many other stories uh, that happened abroad and also in China and elsewhere into my hometown. Uh, not only could stories be transplanted, but also many scenes and, uh, and na nature and uh, creatures could be transplanted. So uh, in my real hometown, it's uh, full of flat plains. There are no mountains. But uh, in my fiction, I write about high mountains and ranges. In my hometown, there is only one river, and it has dried up for 30 years. <laughs> but in my fiction, this river is filled with water, like the Yangtze River and the Yellow River. So it, it, such a writing, uh, writing, it looks as if I'm writing about my hometown, but in fact, I'm writing about the world. It looks as if I'm writing about the villagers um, and people I know, but in fact, I'm writing about everything happening in the world. 
有时候看起来写的是我个人的故事啊，实际上也是写了天下人的故事。Uh, when I'm writing a story, a personal story, it's also a story about mankind. 哎，我这个王德威老师有一个学生一考试就发烧，我是一见一演讲就冒汗。<laughs> so Professor Wang's students, when they have exams, they get a fever, and when I give a speech, I、uh, I start to sweat. 所以，如其说，让让让我一个人在这讲，还不如让我跟哈金先生一块儿聊天比较。更有意思，是吧 ？Rather than having me give a, a soliloquy, I would rather have a dialogue with uh, uh, Mr. Hajin. 我的演讲到此结束。This is the end of my lecture. 莫言先生的这个演讲，这个简洁有力。现在呢，我们希望在第二段的这个。呃，对谈的时间里面呢，提出更多的问题。那么，希望两位呢，做出他们的呃看法，或者是他们交交相互交换意见的一个渠道。所以呢，我想在这里，我先用中文那么说明我的一些想法，或者是请教他们的问题。然后呢，我用英文比较简短的方式呢，重复我的话题。那么，引这两位作家呢，以中文来回答。那么，再一次，我们谢谢。李杰教授以及 Karen Chong 陈丽敏呃女士呢，来替他们做翻译。我想在座的多半的来宾都知道这两位是知名的作家，但是也许并不是每一个人都知道，在他们进入写作的这样的一个职业之前呢，他们两位都曾经是人民解放军的军人。所以我特别好奇的就是，在他们进入写作的生涯之前。那么，不论是农村的经验，或者是他们在军队里面的经验呢，对他们后来的创作是不是有什么那么特别的影响呢 ？Um, we all recognize the fact that Mr. Mo Yan and Mr. Ha Jin are well-established writers, but perhaps some of you don't know the fact that before they became great writers,、um, undertaking the career as writers, they first.、Uh, Became, let's say, soldiers. They actually are, are serving、uh, for the PLA or People's Liberation Army. For、um, Mr. Mo Yan, that was a、uh, 1979. Nian, you you entered the army, right? 1976. 1976, 1976. I think you stayed with the army for more than 20 years. 到一九九七年啊离开。而哈金先生呢 ，Mr. Ha Jin, you joined the PLA. Um, as early as 1969, so actually、um, you you were far ahead of Mo Yan for well seven years, right? And then you stayed with the army for five six years. So I believe this is a, an extraordinary experience for them, and I would like to、uh, find out how this experience、uh, has affected the, their the way they look at the Chinese reality. 那么是不是就请莫言先生呢先说几句，然后请哈金先生再说几句？呃，我刚才也讲到了这个当兵啊，对我们当时的农村青年是一个很大的梦想。呃，后来我这个梦想实现了，对我的帮，对我的写作，我觉得也是很有帮助的。I talked earlier about how joining the army was a dream of us village children, and it really helped me to become a writer. 我想这个全世界实际上这个当过兵的作家实在是太多了，包括美国的海明威啊，什么福克纳。Modern writers around the world have been soldiers, including Hemingway. In China, modern writers have been soldiers, including Hemingway. In China, modern writers have been soldiers, including Hemingway. In China, modern writers have b 所以我觉得当兵对我来讲，第一是我刚才讲的，就是他让我有了空余的时间啊。第二个，我觉得让我熟悉了很多武器啊。<笑> so、uh, being a soldier gave me a lot of time, but it also uh, uh, familiarized me with a lot of weapons. 我前几天去那个西点军校参观了，我最感兴趣的就是他那个展览武器那一部分。So I went to West Point the other day, and I was most interested in the weapons exhibition. 
这个每到世界各地，到了一个地方，我就先问这个地方有没有这个武器的展览馆，有的话一定要去看。And uh, my first uh, stop in every uh, anywhere around the world is a, um, a weapons museum. So, in my past novels, there are many places, many scenes in the novels that have war scenes. In them, they also show various kinds of weapons. So, I write a lot about battles and wars, and uh, in, uh, describing also um, um, many weapons. This, because there are many weapons that are imported from abroad, and when they come to China, 呃，中国老百姓就给他起了很多中国化的名字，所以我在写作的时候，当然用的是中国的名字，嗯，但是翻译者就不明白，我一说不明白，后来我就给他画成图画，告诉他这个枪的形状是这样的。So many weapons are imported to China, and uh, uh, they had original English names, but then I would uh, uh, Chinese people would give them Chinese names, but uh, uh, this is very difficult to translate.、So. 因为这个当兵的经历呢，自然就是对呃战争啊有更多的了解。我想这个战争呢，也是人类生活当中的非常特殊的一种状态。在战争这种特殊的环境里边，人性的恶和善就得到了最大限度的释放。呃，我想一个作家，嗯，一个作家是把写人的情感。当做自己的最根本的任务，那么对描写战争当中的人性，应该是对作家的一个巨大的考验。嗯。So、uh, being a soldier means you get to know war, and with,、uh, in the midst of war, you,、uh, human goodness and badness are really human goodness and evil are really manifested.、Um, so、um, through war, you can write about human nature in a special way. 哈林兄是你是哪一年的入伍的？六九年，我是老兵了。好、哎，六九年绝对说是老兵了。<笑>但我没待很长时间，我就待五年半，我就五年半也够长的了。<笑>嗯，所以这个部队的时候，你像我这个当兵七六年，我见了七五年的兵，就要立刻立正，立正了，就要给他这个，给他这个洗衣服。<笑><笑> So the question、uh, to Hajin was which year he joined the army, and it was 69. And um, um, Wayan joined the army in 76.、Um, at the time, if he met someone who joined the army in 75, he would respect him very much, even washing his clothes. So, we let our 69 years old soldiers talk about it. Actually, I found that I and Wayan have a particular place in common. We have not gone to school. I said that this is very important for the soldier. 你不得不学，因为你不得不学会自己来用自己的眼光来看问题、看社会。Actually, I found a very similar point between our experiences, which is that authors must use their own experiences in their writing. 那个我当兵的时候，我有不过我也很幸运，因为我当兵的时候学校里没有事做，就去呃当兵了。但是那个时候。中国和苏联在边界上正有，呃，摩擦打仗还。Uh, there was a great deal of、uh, border clashes between the Soviet Union and China at the time when I joined the army. 但所以说我们就是到前面去的，到叫珲春县，就是我们住的很近，能看到苏联那个瞭望塔。Uh, we were very close to the Soviet Union. We could even see the watchtowers on the other bank. 这样话就说是，呃，对我来说那是很。对我以后的生活和的写作都是很重要的，因为那真是到了边缘的地方，跟普通的战士和村民，因为我们是没有没有营房，就住在一个朝鲜人老乡家里头，第一年。This had a great impact on my later writing. In my first year, we actually were living in the homes of、um, Koreans. 不过我那个时候我真是没，我也不怎么认识字，跟跟莫言那个先生的情况差不多。呃，其实以后我就离开了，不当炮兵了。以后就当那个电报员，训得训练一年才能当电报员。当时也是七一年的时候，就有些书可以看了，那个就是一些《三国演义》啊，那些古典文学已经可以重印了。我买了一本《三国演义》，头两页看了六个小时，不认识字儿。<笑>
Uh, I didn't know a lot of words at the time, and uh, when I, uh, in 1971, I was already uh, um, uh, in charge of telegrams, yes. uh, and, uh, and at the time, I, I was able to read a lot of new literature. So I had a little cabin to myself to read, and uh, but I, th there were a lot of words I didn't know, so I actually read the dictionary from cover to cover, um, and then after th uh, that, I, I was able to read a lot of so and as a soldier, I was able to observe a lot of people's lives, especially uh, the lives of male and female soldiers. They were full of vitality, but um, um, uh, it, uh, they weren't always a... Sorry. Vitality, <laughs> full of vitality, yes. And uh, I think, Meng Yan, you know, I think you became an officer. You should, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. You <laughs> 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 So I was promoted uh, in 1982. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, I, I think we probably want to uh, try a different um, uh, topic here. Um, 我们都知道, um, 哈金先生呢，他是在呃美国成名的。那么在一九八六年来到美国，是吗？八五年来到美国。那么当时呢，他是在这个Brandeis大学念书。那么他是这个英美文学的专业，但是在这个一九八九年之后呢，他选择希望
那个国内有那个广播讲座，那时候才开始，七六年就开始的。I learned English actually very late when I was 20 years old. So, I think I was born in the United States. But after 1989, I felt that I would have to go back. I decided to study English. This is the process of learning this language. It was not easy to learn. I had to learn the language to create the language. I had to learn the language to create the language. Uh, after coming to the States, I continued learning English, and this uh, process, um, uh, learning to write uh, literary uh, language is very different. Actually, Chinese is still my late native language. I've been writing some poetry in Chinese, and I realize that it's really it feels different. But just to say, a writer is also a ordinary person. He has to live. He has all kinds of responsibilities. So I can't continue to write English. I've gone so far. You can only go one way to the dark side. A writer is also just a human being, ordinary person, and uh, uh, since I started writing in English, I decided to continue with it. Uh, but in Chinese tradition, among Anglophone writers, there are actually quite a few who did not have English as their first language, such as Joseph Conrad, and I consider myself uh, among those um, among those ones. But the question is not that you have to so if I were writing in Chinese, I would write mostly poetry, but because of, of for the sake of survival, it's very important to write novels that that sounds much better. 我读研究生的时候，莫言已经开始出名了。我就非常羡慕，呃，八十年代初嘛，不，八十年代初，呃，中旬他就开始那个，呃，发表短篇小说，就说是呃那种自如在，因为你说at home就是在在自己语言当中
啊，这个聊天中举了个例子，比如说我们汉语了有一个成语叫“怒发冲冠”，是吧？一个人生气的这个头发竖起来，把帽子都顶出来了。那哈基的用英文写：“这个人生气的，用头发竖起来，把帽子都顶出来了。”啊。<笑> so there's a, a, a there's a kind of a, a standard phrase in Chinese that means that when one is so angry that his hair is standing up, that his hat is like standing on top of his hair. And so uh, Ha Jing just used that phrase and translated that into English. So people thought that was very vivid. That's too, way too simplistic. It is no easy task to write uh, in a foreign language, to write a novel in a foreign language. 因为当年我也曾经下定决心要学会英语，学了三个月我就退学了，是吧？嗯。So I actually once、uh, was determined to、uh, learn English, but I gave up. 我每次来这个出国，哎，就发誓回中国以后我什么都不干，我一定要学外语，学英语。就。Every time I leave China and come out to foreign countries, I I vow that I'm going to learn English. 各种学外语的、学英语的这种录音机，什么收音机，买了一大堆。啊。I have many cassettes of how to learn for learning English. 每次都是半途而废，跟戒烟一样，是吧 ？And I gave up every time. It's almost like trying to quit smoking. 所以在在此，我要向这个哈金表示致敬，真了不得。So I want to salute Ha Jing again. 这个作家的语言风格确实是作家的文学的一个作家的风格，就主要的确实是表现在语言上。A writer's style really lies with language. 你像这个我们中国的几个著名的作家，像鲁迅啊、沈从文啊、张爱玲啊，他们首先的区别，我觉得就是在语言上有巨大的区别。So the great writers of modern China, like Lu Xun, Shen Congwen, Zhang Ailing, the greatest difference between them is, lies in their language. Uh, there are many novelists, but there are very few literary, um, literature <laughs> literists. Because <laughs> the <laughs> 就是讲故事的人，是吧？而文学家是创造了一种文体的人，有他自己独特的文体语言风格的人。So、uh, novelists can、uh, are only write stories. They they tell stories. But、um, uh, literary men, I, I don't know how to translate this phrase.、Uh, um, can only uh, they, they are、um, they really create their own language. 而我也说过这个。一个作家的语言风格，实际上在他没有成为作家之前，就已经确定了。嗯、um, ，and uh the language of a writer is actually formed before he becomes a writer。因为他的出身、他的教育、他的个人的生活经验，是形成他的语言风格的最重要的原因吗？ So one's background, education, and also personal experiences really shape the language of a writer. My language cannot be separated from my experience in the village. First, my grandparents' Uh, the dialect spoken by my fellow villagers is a great resource for my uh, literary creation. And the language of folk storytellers and also um, uh, theater troops also became a resource for my language. 然后中国的古典文学啊，像《三国》《水浒》啊，《唐诗》《宋词》《元曲》啊，这些东西也是我的文学语言的重要的构成的部分。Another important component of my literary language is classical Chinese literature, from poetry to drama to novels. 
最明显的例子就是我的小很多小说里边都有这种押韵的现象，而且一个韵一直压的，压到很长的，很长很长都是用一个韵，你这实际上就是从原曲里边学的。So many of my uh, novels actually have uh, a lot of rhyming patterns, and that comes from uh, Yuan drama. Of course, I've also been influenced by the language of big character posters in the Cultural Revolution. There's also quite a bit of uh, exaggeration and irrationality in my language that comes from the Cultural Revolution. Uh, translated fiction, especially the, the, the voice of the translator, also affected my language. So it's actually no easy task to analyze the language of a writer. There are multiple components to it. Of course, a writer invents and creates. <笑>哦，你就是这这是就是这个，实际上我跟你的情况正好是相反，每一本书都是没有什么长处，就是在重新想，因为你说那些人都是中国人，人物都是中国人，嗯，他们也不说英语，所以说对我来说，每一本书
那么尤其他有一本著作呢，就叫做《自由生活》（A Free Life）。所以我想，是不是用这两个关键词呢，来请教他们对于什么是悲悯、什么是自由的一些想法 ？My question has to do with their say fundamental belief in what is literature or what constitutes literature. Um, in his earlier years, Mo Yan's works have often been cited to uh, be compared with works by writers such as uh, Gabriel Garcia uh, Marquez and, or William Faulkner. But in recent years, I have noticed uh, a turn uh, in terms of Mo Yan's attitude toward literature or uh, the subjects um, as described in his works. That is, he has taken upon a Buddhist dimension in approach to Chinese humanity and mercy or compassion, Bei Min, has become a key word for him through, uh, to uh, approach Chinese subject matters. By contrast, um, um, Ha Jin seems to have been more engaged with uh, the notion of what is uh, the relationship between freedom and writing. And uh, to cite the title of one of his works, A Free Life, what exactly is freedom? What is the paradoxical terms uh, underneath one's search and inscription of freedom? That would be my concern or curiosity about his works. So I am inviting uh, both writers to describe uh, their belief in what is literature. A big question, I think. Uh, um, so, Professor Wang mentioned that life and death is wearing me out, um, has a Buddhist dimension, uh, the notion of uh, reincarnation. So, according to Buddhism, uh, rich and poor um, um, pe people in China and abroad, they are all uh, in the midst of suffering. They're living in the midst of suffering. Uh, and uh, whether it's life or death, um, uh, it's a continuing cycle. Only when you transcend life and death then, uh, and, and are in nirvana, then you, are, um, uh, you have escaped from this uh, samsara. So I think the Buddhist belief is that all the things that we look at are very clear. So in Buddhism, you, uh, um, you see that uh, the material life or this life as being uh, very light. Rather taking, uh, rather than taking the Buddha's perspective, maybe we can look at more from a grassroots perspective, from the human perspective. Sometimes we say that we can sacrifice a, a, a few for the sake of many. 有时候为了追求一个社会的巨大的进步我想就变成了这个文学的一个重要的一个题材 And sometimes we say that we sacrifice a few lives for the sake of a greater progress so the human struggle with society becomes a great theme in literature 那个我实际上我很多这个特别关于佛教的那个
因为先生说的地方，有些地方我觉得跟也是相同的。你比方说，佛教当中要说这个死守善道。<笑>嗯，像马英九的办公室里头有一副对联，第二句是“呃，万事皆空善不空”。我觉得这是很重要的，因为文学最终的目的是使人心向善，这是最终的目的。One of the primary goals of literature is、uh, quite similar to the, the, the tenets of Buddhism, which is to、uh, make、uh, good people to have to call out the goodness in people's heart. 嗯，所以说。嗯，我写作有两个方面吧。简单的说，一方面就是说，是一般的人不注意到的这些人，嗯，通过讲他们的故事，使大众能够意识到他们的存在和他们生活的意义。There are two aspects in my writing. The first is that I want to bring out the marginalized voices, the marginalized lives, and、uh, who are underrepresented. 另一方面是我自己，对我来说，写作这个本身就是我自己存在的一种方式，因为我是从我们都是从农村，我因为我父亲，我也是底层的军官，我们都是在最底层上来的人，嗯，过来过来的人，从边缘过来的人，所以说对我们来说，呃，对我自己来说，如果我写作的话，就证明我还活着。Uh, also, the second point is that writing is a mode of existence.、Um, we are coming from the grassroots and from the margins, and it, as long as I write, I know that I exist. So, so, it is a way to spend my life. Yes, I want to thank you. So, 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 I want to thank you. 那么，作为一个中国背景的作家，或者是用中文写作，或者是用英文写作，都不是容易的事情。那么，从二十世纪到二十一个世纪呢，这个中国所经过的各种政治历史的波折呢，那么给予作家的压力和给予作家的灵感是一样的大的。所以，也许我想请教这两位作家，在看待他们自己在写作的过程里面，如何的去平衡。对于自己写作信念的坚持，还有他们对于国家、对于政治、对于乡土，还有尤其是哈金先生的例子呢，对于海外漂流的经验，他们有什么说法 ？Literature and the politics constitutes one of the most important themes and the challenges to all Chinese writers, either in China or overseas. I'm curious about、uh, how these two writers、uh, have approached this、uh, challenging topic through different channels or perspectives, and how the society has responded to their political choice, and how they respond to the various circumstances、um, that、uh, either gave rise to different kind of challenges or actually produce、uh, surprising inspirations for these、uh, writers' creation. 那么，是不是请莫言先生做一下回答呢？嗯，我想这个任何一个作家都是生活在一个具体的社会生活环境里面，那他的写作肯定脱离不开对这个社会生活环境的描写。And、no writer can really、uh, be free of、uh, the concrete circumstances, historical circumstances of、uh, his time. 这个文学本身它也有很多类型，是吧？像这个写《三国演义》嘛，那就是偏重于历史的描写。你写这个《西游记》，那就更偏重于幻想，就是神呐、啊，就鬼啊，是吧？就妖。嗯、um, ，But there's also an element of the imagination, whether it's、uh, with Three Kingdoms or、uh, Journey to the West, where there are many monsters and、uh, gods. 因为这个有的小说里面，这个作家就表现的，通过小说表明了自己的明确的这种呃历史观点、政治观点。那有的小说，那么就他借说鬼啊、说妖啊。写一些超现实的事物，那作家的观点可能就埋藏的很深。Some novelists are very, or some some writers are very explicit about the his, history in、um, in their works, and some are not. 但是你像，即便是像这个中国的这种神魔小说《西游记》这样的作作品，作家的还是有自己的观点在里边，可以看得到的，可以感觉得到的。But even when a writer、uh, is writing about、uh, gods and monsters,、uh, you can still see the、um, uh, his underlying worldview. 
。另外一点就是，我觉得这个作为一个作家，你用这个文学的方式，就是用小说来反映社会生活，并不是一个最根本的目的。你小说家，我想通过小说要给读者留下的最深刻的印象呢，还是应该这个小说里所描写的、所塑造的人物。I don't think it is the task of a writer to use fiction to reflect history, but rather、uh, to to depict vivid characters. 呃，我们这个，比如说我们多年前读过的一篇小说，具体的细节很可能已经忘记了，但是这个小说里的一些主要的人物。我们会记忆的很深刻。So if we、uh, try to remember a novel that we read many years ago, we probably forgot all the historical details, but we would remember the vivid characters. 所以我想，这个中国的这种古代作家，像曹雪芹的《红楼梦》，我想他处理文学跟政治、文学跟社会的关系，就处理的非常高明，写的非常好。So a work like *Dream of the Red Chamber* has a great relationship to its、uh, times, its the society and the history of the time. 那按照鲁迅的说法，这《红楼梦》里面好像什么都写了，是吧？政治也写了，经济也写了，官场也写了，色情也写了，神道也写了，就看你是读者站在哪一个角度来理解它。Well, as Lu Xun said, uh, uh, *Dream of the Red Chamber* includes almost everything: politics, economics, sex, religion. Everything is in it. But I think *Dream of the Red Chamber* leaves us with the most lasting impression of our readers. It is in it, like Chia Pao Yu, Lin Tai Yu, Xue Bao Tai, these people who are distinctive characters. But what matters for readers are the vivid characters in the novel. 所以这就是一个小说的大家，高手，值得我学习的。That's the those are the masterpieces of literature. 呃，我个人的感这个观点吧是，这个文学是不管是一首诗、好诗还是一一个一篇小说，首先是一个艺术品。那这艺术品里头有很多成分，呃，政治社会只是其中的一部分。当然你要描写人物的话。呃，这都是人民跟人物生活分不开的，你就不得不得写，是这种情况。嗯、uh, ，so for literature, whether it's poetry or fiction, it is above all a work of art, and it has many components.、Uh, society and history are only、uh, some of its components. 呃，因为因因，我想所以说，因为这个情况，如果特别写实的作家呢，你必须得从过历史开始，才能超越历史，从内部开始。当然，你要超现实的作家，也可能就呃，可形而上来做，这都没问题的。呃、uh, ，so but a writer must start from a、um, historical background in order to transcend it。但是说，实际上一个要是在呃，我们说所谓的社会政治，在一部伟大作品前面前，实际上是渺小的，只只只不过是一个作品的一部分。比方说，刚才。那个孟岩先生提到《红楼梦》，还有一些别的，像《聊斋志异》，嗯，这个政治已经换了多少波了，这个，呃，社会也换了好多样了，但是这个作品还是在的，是中国人民文化语言当中的，呃，财富。So for work, classical works of literature, of course, they contain elements of its、uh, society, its times, and its、uh, history. But、um, the, our times have changed, and these works remain. So I think that the politics and the history should be considered as material. So politics and history and society are only material for a writer. Thank you very much. 哦、oh, ，因为我们的这个对谈的时间呢，逐渐到了尾声。那么，我们希望留更多的时间，让现场的来宾来提问。那么，也许我们在这里呢，暂时告一段落。但是在我们开放来宾提问之前呢，请让我再多说两句话。那就是这个，作为一个作家呢，这个莫言先生呢，曾经引用了大江健三郎，另外的一位亚洲的诺贝尔奖得主。那么，大江健三郎呢，转述了。赫曼·梅尔维尔 （Herman Melville） 的这个 Moby Dick 的一句话，就是一个作家的责任和他的身份呢，是一个信使，是一个报信者，一个 messenger。而这句话呢，来自于圣经的约伯记。
而另外一方面呢，这个哈金先生呢，曾经也提过，一个作家他的身份，还有他真正发挥能量的地方呢，是他不断移动的位置，他是一个 migrant。所以，我想以这两个关键词呢，作为我们今天结束这个部分的一个一个所谓的提示吧，或者是一个建议，那么留给大家呢更多思考的空间。To conclude the session of the dialogue between Mr. Ha Jin and Mr. Mo Yan, please allow me to invoke two terms they'd like to uh, 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 invoke with regard to the identity and the vocation as a writer. For Mr. Mo Yan, he has uh, once quoted a famous um, a line from Herman Melville's uh, Moby Dick. Uh, the writer for Mr. Mo Yan is he who brings a message to this world, a messenger. Of course, we know the quote is originally from the Book of Job. And on the other hand, Mr. Ha Jin has always argued for the fact that a writer if, is nothing if he is not a migrant. The writer is continu continuously shifting his position um, geopolitically and uh, psychologically and uh, imagistically. So migrant versus messenger. I think uh, these two writers have already demonstrated uh, their contribution to these notions, and certainly they are continually uh, to write more so as to bear witness to their positions with regard to Chinese reality or uh, say the human reality at large. So now I would like to um, uh, open the, um, the floor for question and answer. 我们在这个地方呢，就开始要邀请在座的现场来宾呢，那么提出问题来。那么如果有问题的来宾呢，请您一步到这个我们走到的中间。那么当您提问的时候呢，请先告诉我你们的呃这个背景或是你们的姓名。那么请大家提问的时候，尽量把你们的问题呢缩短在三十秒之内。所以这样的话，我们可以容纳更多的问题，让两位作家来回答。Now we are going to open floor for the session of Q&A. Um, may I ask that those who want to raise questions first identify yourselves and, of course, try to, uh, to, to raise your questions as concisely as possible and as short as possible. Thank you. My name is Du Yuping. I'm from the Chinese Foreign 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 呃、uh, ，我的老师是 Ron d e s u l i s k i 先生，他以前是 Fairbank Center 的，非常感谢。请问您的问题？好，非常感谢这个机会。我的问题是，王老师刚才说的，给了我很大的启发。两位作家是信使，是一个能够在自由世界移动的。莫言先生从中国的农村移动到城市，还有哈金老师从中国移到外国。我想请二位给我介绍一下，在你们的眼中，想给世界人传达。中国是什么样的一个国家？中国文化，然后美国文化和我的研究也非常相关。非常谢谢。Yeah. 谢谢。谢谢。呃 ，So the question was about what's the message that you want to transmit about Chinese and American culture? Yeah. 先请问。嗯、呃，因为我想一个作家用自己的作品向读者传达的信息，应该是非常丰富的，是立体的，是综合性的。The message is very complex and it has many components. 比如说，美国的读者通过我的翻译成英文的著作，可以了解到我所描述的我的故乡的中国的农村的生活。Americans can learn about village life in China through my translated fiction. 嗯，也可以了解到一部分这个我的小说里的中国描述的中国人啊，他们的精神状态，他们的这种。They can learn about the dreams and aspirations of the Chinese people in my works. But in fact, I hope the readers will be able to understand my books through reading Chinese literature or my own literature. But my greater hope is that they will learn more about Chinese literary tradition and cultural tradition. Thank you. I think this Melville, Melville Weir, his that the Chinese. 呃，说法实际上也是小说当中一个很重要的原则，就是说，嗯，带来世界的消息。呃，是，是这个。Yes， 带来世界的消息 ，bring the news of the world
Three needs of the world. <laughs> Three. 但是这个问，就说对我来说，这个更重要一个层次，就是说，这个这个世界的消息，更重要是是从人心来的消息。The more important message comes from the human heart. 所以说，对我来说，我并不对哪个国家、哪个地域感兴趣。我最感兴趣是我的故事当中能使读者在当中找到他们自己。I'm less interested in portraying a nation than in、uh, letting readers find themselves in my work. 好，非常谢谢，请下一位。啊，莫言老师您好，呃，非常感谢您今天来能来跟我们分享这些内容。我我叫李瑜，我是哈佛公共卫生学院一年级的学生。呃，我想问您的问题是一个多年的疑惑，就是我读您第一本书的时候，我还是在读高一，然后。有一天在学校图书馆里面看到一本书叫《檀香刑》，然后我就把它拿下来读了。啊，当时我还是一个就心灵非常纯洁的少女。<笑>读了这本书以后，就一个月没有缓过来。就我觉得让我所感到非常惊讶的是，不仅仅是在这本书中您所描写的内容，而且就作者有一种愉悦感，有一种。就近乎残忍的、近乎冷酷的津津乐道。您在说把这个一个人切多少刀，然后把他凌迟掉，或者说把一个人用一个棍子从后面捅到前面，这样，我觉得您在描述这个过程当中，就我想问您是怎么想的？谢谢。谢谢。The question is about the cruelty of、uh, of Moyen's fiction because she read this when she was in high school and found sandalwood death extremely cruel and almost delighting in the um, in in its、um, uh, descriptions and wondered what what he was thinking at the time. Because Oh, um, and execution. 但是我想一刀不写呢，一点不写，我觉得也很难把这个人物来写的活灵活现。But without resorting to such details, I can't depict such a vivid character. 所以我个人直接也认为，小说里边有关这些场面的情景的描写，是塑造人物的必要。So I, I find such details necessary to depict this a character like him. 是不是应该这个写的少一点呢？这个可以考虑，是吧 ？I can consider writing less. OK， 非常感谢。下面一位，请。我叫岳林，是哈佛大学啊、呃、科学史和科学哲学的博士。我想向尊敬的莫言先生问一个问题：在您最开始创作的时候，是仅仅出于一种个人的兴趣呢，还是也怀有一种对中国社会乃至中国文化的责任感？而获得诺贝尔奖，有没有唤醒乃至加强您的这种责任感？谢谢。谢谢。The question is whether the motivation for writing is out of personal interest or out of a sense of responsibility towards China and the nation, and whether Nobel Prize even reinforced that sense of responsibility. 我这个刚才我自己演讲的时候，我要说到我今天离上帝这么近，我要说真话。Earlier, I said that since I'm so close to God, I must speak the truth. The truth is, I never thought about all that whatever you had asked. Because <laughs> I really didn't have any sublime motivations in mind when I began writing. Even after the Nobel Prize, I don't think I have any noble motivations.
But I know that a writer has responsibility. And that responsibility is to use all his energy to write a good novel. Only when you show good work can you uh, deserve the label of a writer. Uh, and it's uh, useless to keep thinking about this. <笑>然后我的问题是比较轻松的因为我觉得很多作家在写作的时候他很容易入进去特别就是在写那个作品的时候整个人就被带入到故事里然后情感上可能很难抽离所以我的问题就是您是怎么平衡这个写作的过程还
Uh, he was my grandfather's brother's daughter. She was she. Sorry. Uh, she was truly a, a gynecologist. She had she was, uh, gave birth, uh, she helped give birth to thousands of children. She was she was extremely daring. As a midwife, she often had to go outside in the mid middle of the night. She had very cold hands. And she told many stories. So we often went to her house and she would tell us all these ghost stories. It's not because I want to write this novel that I find this character, but rather because I want to write about this aunt that I write the novel. Of course, I will touch on questions like the one child policy. There are two ways of writing on a, a, a novel. One is to write about a big issue and then write about details and making that into a microcosm. Uh, the other is to write about small things and then write about big things from small things. A frog is a novel that uh, it begins with a small detail and uh, extends into larger issues. Okay, good. Then we'll go to the next one. I'm called Jiao Xiaoting. I'm from the United States Du Bois Institute. I'm studying the direction of the direction of the American culture. I'm going to ask you this question to Mo Yan. I'm going to ask you this question. 两个月之前，他在国内的时候读到一篇刘在富先生写的评论您的文章。他说您的作品当中带有一种酒神精神的狂欢，说保是生的狂欢、死的狂欢、酒的狂欢和爱的狂欢。我读过您的《蛙》，我我想知道您在这《蛙》这部作品当中，因为计划生育死了很多的婴儿和胎儿，你是如何把死这个问题作为狂欢化的处理的？谢谢。非常谢谢。Uh, the question is about the, uh, sense the carnivalesque in um, uh, Moyen's uh, works, especially how uh, it is treated in the novel Frog. <laughs> Not all my novels are carnivalesque. <laughs> also not entirely in Frog. Oh, there is a carnivalesque fantastic detail where uh, aunt is going home and there are a whole bunch of frogs that are following her. Okay, thank you. In the interest of the time, probably we can accommodate only one more question. It has to be a short question. 因为时间的关系，可能只能再有一个问题。其他的话，那么在在场的诸位，可能要请你们这特别来包含我们今天时间的压力，好吧？请。啊，莫言老师好，哈金老师好，王老师好，很高兴我经常去听王老师的课，所以今天也特别荣幸能够。请问问题。我知道，就是我今天的问题，就是说，呃，您两位是都是文学的大家，但我自我介绍一下，简简单的自我介绍，我反正我是，就是非常简单。就是说，我是一个学理工科出来的人，但是很荣幸能够去听很多文学的课。那我我也特别喜欢您的书，我自己全套我都买了。所以我的想法就是说，我想请教，就是说您写了这么多关于文学的东西，您对于呃，就是说文化或者文学来讲，您认为是您是悲观的，或特别是中国的文化，您是悲观的还是乐观的呢？那您的呃，或者是说。另外一点就是说，诗歌，我自己很喜欢中国古典的诗歌。我想请教一下你们，就是说小说跟诗歌这之间的美学的东西，你们是怎么看的？谢谢。好，谢谢。
Sí, a ver. The two questions are whether uh, they're pessimistic or optimistic about Chinese culture, and the second <laughs> question uh, is the relationship between, uh, between fiction and poetry. It's a huge question. <laughs> I'm sometimes pessimistic and sometimes optimistic about life. <笑>我跟那个莫言先生一样 诗歌的诗人的雄心是应该在一个语言当中，呃，留下自己的呃成分。比方说，李白、杜甫，我们现在说的汉语当中还有好多他的他们的诗行，小说呢就是要讲一个故事，能深入人心的故事，能够相流传